Welcome to Bible at Home, a devotional and educational offering of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. And on this week of February, following February 19th, our Transfiguration Sunday, we have the light of the world from uh, John 9, 1 to 41. So let's see... uh, As we're in transfiguration today, talking about God, how God reveals himself as we come to the end of this epiphany season, we come to the probably one of the more dramatic um, revelations of Jesus. The more, hey, just in case you were wondering, here it is. But uh, we also get to see God in our daily life. So where have you seen God recently? And uh, as we prepare to look at this story, um, keeping in mind what what is God doing what what part does God have humans play in this story what's Jesus part in the story that's always the best part um what surprises unsettles comforts you and what questions do you still have so let's look here oops again a little bit of a big reading but uh, let's uh, take it a piece at a time and just try to listen as he walked along he saw a man blind from birth His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither was this man nor his parents, nor have, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, night is coming. When no one can work, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors, well, let's stop there for a minute here. Um, This whole chapter, chapter nine in John is this story. So we're going to, we're going to get the full story. So here's our setup. We begin with this man who is born blind. Now Jesus has healed other blind people that, you know, maybe we would think we would probably say due to cataracts and accidents and such their sight has been restored but there's something about this this man who was born blind he has never seen and what you know the I, the thought pattern would be what was so terrible what did this man before he was even born or after he was born or what did his parents do that was so terrible that they should be punished by not by having a blind son, by this man being born blind. So what does Jesus do? He makes, you know, he says, okay, this guy was born blind so that I could prove something to you people. And he makes mud. Now, what was Adam made of back in Genesis? Was it Adam made of mud? So is this a little work that the creator has to finish? Hmm, maybe we'll see. So he tells him, okay, go to this pool, this pool of Siloam, and wash off the mud. And when he does, he can see. And he comes back able to see. So, you know, where would you go? Back back to where you came from. So we get our first encounter here. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. So he kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. Um, a, a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of a farcical drama here, okay, in the story. Um, here's this man giving his witness, giving his testimony, uh, but 
he can't answer people's questions. You know, well, so where is this guy? You know, you told you said um, he's healed you. Where is he? And he said, oh, I don't know. Um, so there's a lot of in this story about people not knowing. And is that a little that's a little bit of a theme in John's gospel. Um, as Jesus speaks, people not knowing, people not understanding. But is part of this because they don't have the full story yet. Uh, but I am the man. Um, almost reminds me of, of back at uh, the story, I don't think we had it this time, but when David is confronted by, um, by Nathan about his um, adultery with Bathsheba and, and Nathan um, has to say to, to David, you are the man. You are the man who sinned. You are the man who did this. But um, here he is. This man is proclaiming, I am the man. You know, okay. He's, he's, take, he's owning it. So nobody believes him. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day <laughs> when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, oh, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He's a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that, how it is now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. <laughs> he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. Talk about passing the, the buck, passing the blame around here, right? Okay, no, we, yep, yep, uh, he's, he's our son. You know, go with the safe testimony, right? He's our son, yes, he was born blind, but we don't know. Um, but, the, but, but notice the man formerly blind. He's a prophet. He is proclaiming Jesus. Um, you know, every time, notice every time he is asked to give this testimony, it gets a little bolder. It gets, it, you can just hear him kind of like, ah, understanding or getting, getting a little, you know, for him to say he's a prophet. Oh my goodness. That's taking it to the next step, but he's got his, he's got his witness down. So that, so for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind. And they said to him, give glory to God. Oh, yeah, but, and that's right, in the other page, um, Jesus, of course, healed this man on the Sabbath. You don't do any work on the Sabbath. Therefore, he's got to be a sinner. So for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind. And they said to him, give glory to God. You know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? <laughs> then they reviled him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. You know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered him, he is an astonishing thing. Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. You know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to, to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that, that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could, not, he could do nothing. 
They answered him, you are born entirely in sins and you are trying to teach us. And they drove him out. Um, yeah, this idea of witness. Um, every time this man is questioned, he goes deeper. You do you wonder is is he kind of processing this? Is he is he now testing the testers? Um, and notice how it's like, well, you're a sinner. You get you can't uh, you know this this thing about sin keeps coming up. And if you're a sinner, boy, you can't be any good. And this Jesus must be a sinner, so he can't be any good. Um, but but notice how this man you know sticks to his story. He knows what he knows. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. So here now, after three, four times that he's got to witness, that he has had to stand up, for Jesus, he finally gets to see Jesus in the flesh, so to speak. And he believes, you know, Lord, I believe. And he worships him. So he gets a, shall we call it a reward? You know, he gets to see the conclusion of his one of his witness. He gets to see Jesus. So Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. Oh boy, here's the this knowledge of good and evil, what is right, what is wrong, uh, what's what's your perspective? Um, that's where kind of Jesus is, is putting that question in our minds and in the minds of of these um, of these religious authorities who think these Pharisees, right? The Pharisees, the people who know what's going on. Um, and Jesus doing that little twist. If you were blind, you know, you don't have to see it. You'd hear it. You'd, you'd sense it. But now that you have seen, but now that you have seen and you still continue in your sin, your misunderstanding, then you are indeed, um, indeed blind. So a little play on words there. So God of vision too often. We are spiritually blindfolded, unable to see you at work in our world. Remove barriers that keep us from seeing. Help us to be light for others. Amen. And uh, Jesus is the light. That is our blessing. We talk about Jesus is the light, and we too are the light of the world. Um, that lighthouse that guides us. And um, one of the ways, you know, this idea of being caregivers, um, and helping other people along in life. This man who was born blind probably had people that helped him. And now that he can see, he's he was the one helping other people out. So um, caregivers help others to see the light of um, where they are at in life and bring that love and light of God to those people. So um, have a happy Transfiguration Week. Uh, this Today, Wednesday, the 22nd, is our uh, Ash Wednesday. So I hope you can make it to an Ash Wednesday service as we begin our Lenten season. Uh, John gives us a little different look at how Jesus is the light of the world. Continue to hear, and we will come to understand and see. Amen.